Today we honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., a man who fought for civil rights for people of all races. From Selma to his I Have a Dream speech in August 1963, Dr. King represented what we as Americans should represent, the motto of United We Stand, Divided We Fall. You ever had an argument with someone and you were able to find the resolve because you just didn't fight with them? You just tried to find peace? Well, that's what Dr. King's movement did. And that's why he was able, in a peaceful manner, to achieve all the things he did. Dr. King will forever be remembered for changing our nation for the better. Richmond County's Nightly News starts right now. And welcome to Live at Five. I'm Lance Jenkins. Tonight's episode is brought to you by Medical Center Pharmacy, located at 805 Long Drive in Rockingham. Go see Lizelle, Jonathan, and Greg Marks over on Long Drive. They're great folks. Medical Center Pharmacy, the service you deserve from the neighbors you trust. Visit medicalcenterpharmacy.com. Also a reminder that the Classic Rock, a 24-hour, seven-day-week radio station, we've talked about it since our release last week, it will launch one week from today. Monday, January 22nd with the flagship morning show, Good Morning Sand Hills. Be sure to check it out. We will have a ton of giveaways going on on Facebook, on our social media. So be looking out on the Richmond Observer page and you can learn how you can win some cash and tickets. A lot of excitement going on. But folks, let's get right to the nightly news. It starts right now. Last week, a three-judge federal panel struck down a North Carolina congressional district map, making it the first time in the nation's history such action has been taken over political gerrymandering. The redistricting plan court challenge began as two cases, but was eventually lumped into a single case. The original complaints were brought by Common Cause and the League of Women Voters of North Carolina. As a part of this week's filing, the judges have ordered the General Assembly of North Carolina to approve a new map of districts by January 24th. The judges who struck down the map have indicated that a redistricting expert will be engaged to draw new maps if the legislature refuses to do so. For Chuck Tim's full story on the details of this impending deadline to redraw the maps and comments from Republican primary challenger Mark Harris and Democratic primary challenger Dan McCready, visit richmondobserver.com. And joining me now uh, to comment on this issue is the chair of the North Carolina Democratic Party, uh, Mr. Wayne Goodwin, and he's also a native of Richmond County. Glad to have you in studio today. It is my pleasure to be here. So, And you were actually here today for the MLK Day luncheon uh, over in Ellerby. I was. In fact, uh, having served on the planning committee for many, many years uh, back in the 90s and 2000s, it was just a, a, quite a surprise to be invited uh, to be the keynote speaker for today's luncheon. Well, I'm sure they were glad to have you. I actually spoke to members of that committee. They told me they were glad to have you, and we're glad to have you in studio as well. My pleasure. I want to talk to you about the uh, gerrymandering issue that has really kind of become the main issue here in North Carolina right now on the political front. Uh, the most pressing thing is that the Republican-led legislature, the General Assembly, has a January 24th deadline to be able to redraw the maps. Uh, federal judges ruled last week that they were practically unfair. It was a case of gerrymandering and they had to redraw it uh, because it, it was partisan and it gave one party uh, an advantage. What is, as a chair of the Democratic Party, what is your belief? Uh, was it intentional? I believe it is intentional and the proof is that these maps and the maps that came afterwards have been fought over now for six, seven years. Um, some may say, well, this is what Democrats did when they were in charge. Well, not to this degree. And there never were a, uh, evidence of slow walking, uh, the creation of maps. And the judges, particularly the federal judges, have become extremely uh, upset and concerned that, that the, the state legislature hasn't moved more quickly on this because elections are imminent. And we've already gone through several cycles of elections through, over the, through the years using maps that have been proven to be unconstitutional. And, of course, now we have an election this year. Uh, the 9th Congressional District uh, has a, both a Republican and a Democratic primary where there are challengers. Uh, and my, my question for you is, is there any expectation at all that that will be, that this, this ruling will affect the outcome or if, if there is a, even is an election? Well, that is a live issue. It is, it is truly something that could go any direction. Uh, the filing for federal and state offices, and you referenced the 9th Congressional District, that is slated to begin in just a few weeks, it's about just under a month away. And having seen uh, federal courts delay 
primary elections before or, 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 or delay filing periods before. Anything could happen at this point. And of course, the legislature, uh, as I understand it, has chosen to appeal, and that matter is being expedited uh, as we speak. So, so I think we need to stay tuned because it could very well shape and alter the, the election cycle here in this area. And depending on what maps uh, come forward after this, there could be some tweaking that affects uh, this congressional district. Do you expect, does the Democratic Party have any expectation that the General Assembly will not cooperate? Because it's already been said that if they do not cooperate, they'll bring in experts to draw these maps for them practically. Do you have the expectation that the, that the Republican-led General Assembly is going to, to stall here intentionally? Well, I am an optimistic person in general, but in looking at the evidence and the years of litigation and the fact that the courts have ordered certain things to be done and it's been done in a very slow, extremely methodical way in order to, to delay you know, certain results from happening, uh, I am concerned that that will continue to be the case. Uh, you know, No matter which party holds the majority, elections are the people's elections. They belong to the people. And it is just unfair and improper for elected officials and for candidates to choose their voters. The voters should be choosing the candidates. And the system truly has gotten rigged. And uh, we're seeing it in other states, not just, you know, it can happen with both parties. But here in North Carolina, we, we should care about what will ensure fair elections that are not rigged because it affects our pocketbooks and affects who our elected officials are. Absolutely. And of course, uh, again, if you're just joining us, we're joined by the chair of the Democratic Party in North Carolina, Mr. Wayne Goodwin, and he's also a native, uh, you got it, Richmond County, uh, right here. And of course, let's talk about you for a moment. Sure. You're the chair of the Democratic Party, that's a major honor. Um, no matter what side of the aisle you stand on, that is a major honor. And let's talk about how it feels to be a Richmond County boy and you end up growing into a man who is now leading the Democratic <laughs> Party in North Carolina. Well, it is honestly nothing I ever dreamt of, uh, but uh, doors close and doors open. Uh, I had always believed in public service and being active and, you know, in shaping policy. And of course, as, as many of your viewers know, I've represented this area in the legislature and also represented the, uh, the whole state as our state insurance commissioner for many years. But uh, this just happened to be a place where I could use my talents and my, uh, my focus on helping to move our state forward. So I never dreamt of being the chair of, the, of, of, of any political party, but uh, I want to do the very best I can to make North Carolina the best it can be. Certainly a major honor for sure. And of course, I want to, want to refocus one more time, if you yeah, will. We're all sure. over the place. Yeah. But I want to talk to you. Uh, what, if, if you see the ninth, do you see the 9th Congressional District uh, being affected at all um, by, the, by the redrawn maps? I mean, what kind of expect, is there any expectation at all right now on what that might look like? It clearly, I'm, I'm assuming that there's a consensus among Democrats that the way it's drawn now is not fair, or are they looking at other districts? Is District 9 affected by this case of gerrymandering? Well, you know, when we have finite state borders and you have a finite number of people that are used uh, to do calculate the sizes of these districts. Even when you have a few districts that are called into question, of which that's the case here, there's a few districts, not, not the ninth, there is a p the potential for a domino effect. As you try and, and, and draw more compact districts, fairer districts that aren't based uh, solely on race or that aren't based solely on partisan affiliation, which is what happened in this instance where it was, you know, being of a different party or being unaffiliated was being used against the voters as opposed to not having an effect. There's always a chance there could be changes to the ends of the the ends of the of the congressional district because they touch on or are near districts that were called into question. So I think anything is game. I think the further west you go in the state, the less likely there will be impact by this case. But if you're in the central part, uh, the northeastern part, you, there could be changes. Absolutely, folks. Chair of the Democratic Party in North Carolina, Wayne Goodwin and Richmond County native, joining us in studio today on Live at Five, and it's certainly been a pleasure to have you in studio. It is my honor. I look forward to coming back. Folks, stay with us. We will be right back for more news, weather, and sports right after these messages.
Exit Realty Platinum in Rockingham is listed one of the most beautiful homes in Richmond County. Located in Rockingham on Ledbetter Lake, the home features four bedrooms with bamboo floors and a kitchen featuring stainless steel appliances and granite countertops, and a master bedroom that overlooks Ledbetter Lake, along with a spacious tile shower and the attached master bathroom. The open living space leads to the back deck with a perfect view of Ledbetter Lake, and the property features its own boat dock. Want to see this beautiful home? Call Nicole Hayden with Exit Realty Platinum, your source for homes in Richmond and Moore counties. Family Pharmacy is a local pharmacy that's been in business in Rockingham for over 10 years. Located in the Food Lion Shopping Center on US 1 North, we have easy access into the store and a drive through for your convenience as well. You can download the official Family Pharmacy app at MyFamilyPharmacy.com and we'll help you set it up to text you when your prescription is ready and you can even set it up to fill your prescriptions when due. Our motto is we'll treat you like family and it's something we truly mean. We take the same care in filling your prescription that we would take for our own family. Family Pharmacy, we'll treat you like family. The process, you guys just outdo yourselves every day. And I really appreciate it. I honest to God don't know what I would do if it weren't for you. The things that you do, I'm in approval of. And thank you. I, 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 I don't know what else to say other than thank you. And welcome back to Live at Five. The MLK Celebration Foundation Committee held its annual parade on Saturday in downtown Rockingham. The parade featured the Richmond Senior High School Band, area churches, law enforcement, and local fraternal societies to celebrate Martin Luther King Jr. Day weekend and honor Dr. King's legacy. The parade was followed by a service in the Richmond County Courthouse, and the event was highlighted by several community leaders speaking and local student Raven Newton singing a few pieces to honor Dr. King and not only his legacy, but his ministry. Take a listen. Luncheon honoring Dr. King was also held today in Ellerby at the Sydney Grove Agape Center. We will have full coverage and stories on the Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day weekend events in tomorrow's edition of the Richmond Observer. The Richmond County Sheriff's Department announced the arrest of two persons in a relation to an armed robbery in the Cordova area. Felony robbery with a dangerous weapon charges were filed against Devion Marquise Ward, 21, of Trent Street in Rockingham and Quandon Hayson Wilson, 25, of Wheat Street in Rockingham, and they were processed into the Richmond County Jail. Upon receiving an alarm call from a local convenience store in the Cordova community on Tuesday, January 9th, deputies responded and confirmed that a robbery had in fact occurred. It was reported that the suspects had disclosed a gun at Duncan's food store and took cash from the register before fleeing the scene. Subsequent to receiving descriptions of the suspects, a Rockingham police officer observed a vehicle traveling away from the area at a high rate of speed on Old Chiral Highway and gave chase, stopping the vehicle on Spring Street in Rockingham. However, it was determined that the vehicle was actually being operated by a witness to the robbery who was attempting to locate the suspects. Sheriff's deputies arrived on the scene and got accurate descriptions of the suspects and their vehicle from the witness. According to the Sheriff's Office, deputies subsequently arrested both men in short order at a nearby residence. A further felony charge was filed against Wilson for assault on a government official, though, and he was also cited for resisting arrest, communicating threats, assault by pointing a gun, and injury to personal property, all of which are misdemeanors. Ward received a $100,000 secured bond, and Wilson received a $175,500 excuse me, $175,500 secured bond. Both are scheduled to appear in court on January 18th. 
And folks, join us in just a moment. When we come back, we'll be talking about someone from Richmond County. Huge honor being uh, named the director of the Union County Department of Social Services. We'll be talking about that and sports and weather coming up right after these messages. Hi, I'm Lance Jenkins, and welcome to your nightly news. Mm, mm, mm. That ain't, that ain't going to work. Oh, well. Oh. need to loosen up some. This is good okay. more at Sandhills. All right. So, more relaxed. It's local. It's edgy. Anything goes. So, that what you just did? No. Not going to fly. Mm, okay. Is this better? So much better. McNair Auto Sales is the place to buy your pre-owned car, truck, or van. To be the best, it takes big selection, friendly staff, and great pricing. We guarantee a no-hassle buying experience, and financing is available right on site. So come see us today. We're located at 1026 East Broad Avenue in Rockingham. And remember, with over 40 years of experience, you know McNair is the name you can trust. At Richmond Community College, we can prepare you for a high-skill, high-paying career in a variety of fields. From business to education, engineering, utilities, healthcare, criminal justice, information technology, and human services. At Richmond Community College, we can save you thousands of dollars on tuition through our university transfer programs that provide a seamless transition to universities and colleges throughout North Carolina. At Richmond Community College, we are always developing new courses and programs in response to the communities we serve. We offer day, evening, and online courses, and you can now complete five curriculum programs entirely online. At Richmond Community College, we believe in helping you prepare for a better life. Richmond Community College, local college, big impact. Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts is all about rustic home decor and gifts. You will always find a variety of unique antiques, vintage, and new items in our shop. Come and see our selection of housewarming, new baby, and wedding gifts. For the man in your life, we have many collectibles, boker knives, and leather. And ladies love the jewelry, purses, candles, hats, and t-shirts. We also offer a 30-day layaway program. Come and experience shopping at Willow Tree Antiques and Gifts. And welcome back to Live at Five. New days are on the horizon for Union County's Department of Social Services as it announced its new director set to start next month. And it begins with a Richmond County native. Ashley Lance, age 37, is a native of Hoffman and former executive director for Turning Point, a domestic violence service providing help for people dealing with domestic issues. She will be replacing former director Ray Alipa, who resigned in September after serving as director since 2013. You can read the full story today's edition of Richmond Observer on the richmondobserver.com website as well as a free to download RO app. And now for tonight's top sports story. Yes, it was raining on the campus of Scotland High School Friday night, but it was also raining inside the Fighting Scots Gymnasium. Three-pointers, that is. And the Richmond Senior High School varsity boys basketball team had its fair share of them, despite dropping its fifth straight conference game in a row, 67-53, to to Sandhills Athletic Conference rival Scotland, who's now 11-3 on the season and 5-1 and in conference play. A combined total of 18 three-pointers rang home as the team split the tally with nine triples apiece. Richmond, now 5-9 and nine on the season and 1-5 and in conference play, also put together its best team three-point shooting performance of the season. Richmond junior guard Roderick Newton had a team high in threes, having four of his own, and points totaling 14, all of which came in the second half of the shootout, including three fourth-quarter three-pointers. Along with Newton, four other Raiders hit from downtown, including junior guards Micah Wilson, Alex Quick, Malik Stanback, and Bobby Terry. The Raiders will head to Rocky Mount Preparatory on Monday, of course that's this evening, for a non-conference matchup for the Martin Luther King Jr. Classic. Tip-off is set for 3 o'clock p.m. And a preview for tomorrow's episode of Live at 5, when a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity pops up, it's best to take advantage of it. And that's exactly what Richmond Senior High School senior running back Dante Miller is doing. And that opportunity entails committing to attend and play football at the Ivy League's Columbia University in New York City, New York. 
Miller confirmed his transfer in a sit-down interview late last week, and Miller will sign his national letter of intent to Columbia on Wednesday, February 7th, and he'll be joining us in studio tomorrow with our managing editor, Kyle Piller, to tell you all about it in an exclusive sit-down interview. That's coming up on tomorrow's episode of Live at Five. All right, folks, it's time for your weather and five-day forecast. Our chief weather reporter, Kelsey Rushing. Kelsey, what do we have to look forward to in the next fi five days? Thanks, Lance. Today's five-day weather forecast is brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance. And I hope you all enjoyed your weekend. But other than that, let's move on to your five-day weather forecast for Monday. So starting with Tuesday, we have a 0% chance of rain with a high of 51 and a low of 32. And then Wednesday, Wednesday is the day that we all thought there was going to be snow. So it turned into a wintry mix with rain and snow with a 50% chance of that with a high of 37 and a low of 17. So if it snows, it snows. If it doesn't, we've already had our snow this year. So moving on to Thursday, we have a 0% chance of rain, all sunny, with a high of 44 and a low of 22. And then Friday, also 0% chance of rain, sunny, with a high of 52 and a low of 26. And then Saturday is, of course, again, sunny, with a 10% chance of rain and a high of 58 and a low of 34. Other than that, let's go back to Lance for the news desk. And that's a wrap for this edition of Live at Five, your Monday edition and also your Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day edition. And we certainly, again, appreciate all the people in the community have put on events over the last few days uh, to honor the legacy of Dr. King. And we'll be talking about it all tomorrow as we continue our coverage of today's and this weekend's events. And join us again tomorrow, Tuesday, as we have another edition of your college football roundup. Uh, as we'll be talking a little bit about college football. We'll also be focusing on NASCAR uh, with Russell Parker. We're just literally weeks away from the Daytona 500 uh, and, and much to come this season in NASCAR. We'll be talking about that and a number of other things. May even slip in a few things about the NFL playoffs uh, that are going on right now. What a finish yesterday in the Minnesota New Orleans game. And of course, uh, we'll also uh, be looking forward to the return of the official Richmond County Athlete of the Week feature this week. That'll be coming in later this week. All right, folks, remember you can watch live at five on demand anytime on the Facebook page, our YouTube channel, richmondobserver.com, and you guessed it, the free to download RO app. We'll see you tomorrow night. We'll do it all over again. So long.